Hi, I'm Jeffrey Hughes, and I'm a lecturer here in anthropology at the University of Exeter. To be honest, I never thought that I would write a book about marriage when I first went to Jordan. But as a Peace Corps volunteer living with a host family in a village and teaching English at the local primary school, marriage was by far everyone's favorite topic of conversation. Talk of matchmaking led almost inexorably to talk about the cost of land and cement and steel rebar for the house, the cost of gold, jewelry, and fine clothes for the woman's mahar, or bride wealth, and the cost of performers, meat, and other refreshments for the wedding. Initially, this absolutely bored me to tears. I had studied anthropology and previously fancied myself something of a political anthropologist, but it didn't take me long to realize that this was politics, and that as a good anthropologist and a good ethnographer, it was actually essential that I not project my own interests onto other people, but meet them where they were and figure out why the things that interested them were so important to them. This sent me on a journey that has taken me uh, through uh, construction sites, archives, Sharia courts, dozens of weddings and engagement parties, and the activism of the Islamic charity, the Chastity Society, with their mass weddings and training courses for newlyweds. In Jordan, marriage is very much about the issue of legitimacy in a number of senses, both about the legitimacy of people's relationships with each other, but also about the legitimacy of the state and larger political structures. And there's a, what we might call, after the anthropologist uh, Vasus Argrayu, a symbolic struggle between different notions of legitimacy and different notions of political order in contemporary Jordan. The most traditional way of getting married in Jordan, and the one most distinct, perhaps, from the, might be familiar to a more Western audience, begins with what is known as the jaha, or the proposal delegation. You and maybe your 50 or 100 closest kinsmen will pile into cars and drive over to uh, the family of the bride to ask for her hand in marriage. Circumlocutions like, what's her name, or your noble daughter might be used. A cup of coffee will be proffered to the representative of the groom's family, which he will initially refuse. Uh, after negotiations over the bride wealth, uh, the amount of money that will be given to the bride when she gets married, uh, the co co coffee will be drunk, and then coffee will be served around to all of the guests, signifying the creation of a new relationship between the two families. And at this point, there will be a, an eruption of ululation uh, among the women in their section uh, of the celebration perhaps some celebratory gunfire. Everyone will pile back into their cars and drive off uh, to the sound of, of music and, and sort of good times. Uh, and this begins a sort of a long and sometimes seemingly endless process that young people go through as they wait from the point at which uh, they become engaged uh, to the point at which they become technically married on the wedding night, which is known as the ishar or the sort of the publicization of their relationship. Uh, increasingly, this is... Uh, defined not just by the uh, institutions of traditional Bedouin society, but also by the five-star dream weddings that people imbibe on television and through films. This means uh, the sort of immaculate gauzy white that we've come to expect from uh, television and film. It means individual portions. It means small plates, multiple fine uh, forms of silverware, uh, and everything, of course, uh, being immaculately clean, ordered, uh, and safe. This has become all the more extreme since the Amman hotel bombings of 2005 uh, during the uh, Al-Qaeda campaign against the Kingdom of Jordan, uh, after which point uh, hotels became defined by blast walls, checkpoints, metal detectors, and, and, and other forms of security. One does not simply wander into such spaces, of course. Uh, and this sits uneasily with the traditional wedding now, uh, defined by uh, traditional uh, folk songs, large heaping plates of meat that are served collectively. You dig in with your hand, you pull out large hunks of meat and rice, forming them into balls with your hand and knocking them back. If you're the host, of course, you should always tear up meat and force it onto your guests to make sure that they are full. And of course, there's no reason why you would have to eat with your hand. Uh, and believe me, I know because people comment on it reg uh, later if you bring your own spoon. Uh, but this, of course, also is a way in which different forms of legitimacy are debated and contested within contemporary Jordan, pitting different classes and different ethnic groups against one another, rural against urban, poor against wealthy. But this isn't the only way of getting married in contemporary Jordan. Increasingly, the Sharia courts play a dominant role in the process of legitimating marriages and relationships. Over the course of my research, I witnessed over 100 people get married in the uh, Jordan Sharia courts. I also constructed a database of over 800 marriage contracts con uh, contracted between the years of 1926 and 2011. 
And what I found was that the ways in which these form contracts were transforming people's relationships over time was quite subtle. Going back to as early as the 16th century with the arrival of the Ottoman Empire in what is now Jerusalem, uh, the uh, uh, contracts would detail unheard of details, like the name of the woman, uh, emphasizing the individual consent of those involved, the fact that the bride wealth was received in uh, her hand or her father's hand with her permission, and other such matters that are of no import in the traditional uh, wedding delegation. We also could see, uh, for instance, the changing role of the figure known as the guardian and the diminishing role of a previous figure known as the agent. Today, if you want to get married in Jordan, the Sharia courts are deeply concerned in an era of human trafficking, refugees, and other such issues with uh, the consent of the partners involved. They painstakingly record indexical linkages of consent, whether they be fingerprints or signatures linking the bride and the groom to the relationship uh, and their agreement. Uh, but in the earlier time period, from 1926 to 1953, prior to the uh, ch transformation of Jordan's family law, it was actually the uh, much more amorphous figure of the wakil who was dominant in this. And in over 10% of the marriage contracts I observed, there was actually no discernible relationship between the woman and her agent. This despite the fact uh, that most Arabic names include uh, the person's name, their father's name, their grandfather's name, and then the name of their tribe. But of course, these statistics don't just serve as a way for me to know uh, what contemporary Jordanian marriage practices are like. They've also become very much part of the struggle over legitimacy within contemporary Jordan itself. Statistics uh, don't just stay in the courts. They increasingly come to define the activism of Islamic and secular activists alike. So the Islamic charity, the Chastity Society, uh, which is very much associated with the Muslim Brotherhood and the broader Islamic movement, uh, has uh, produced a thriving uh, cottage industry of pamphlets and st uh, social scientific studies uh, that look at everything from the phenomenon of gender, which they represent here helpfully with a snake destroying a house, uh, to the concept of divorce before consummation. And unlike uh, other aspects of Jordan's marriage crisis, defining rates, uh, declining rates of marriage or uh, increasing rates of divorce, the phenomenon of divorce before uh, consummation is very much a product of the Sharia court's own knowledge practices. And the debate over whether the wedding ha uh, or the, the marriage is truly legitimate, I should say, after uh, the signing of the contract and the conclusion of the delegation, or rather after uh, the wedding and the ishar of the uh, uh, wedding night. Uh, and within this context, we see not only that the Chastity Society and its activists like Amal Abdin uh, uh, criticize the state, but they also increasingly find themselves in relationships of complicity. As Amal Abdin herself notes in her study of divorce before consummation, her research would have been impossible without the support of uh, the Supreme Judge, the same office uh, that, of course, allowed my research and my statistical investigations into Jordan's Sharia court's records. But the Chastity Society also has its own pro problems with legitimacy as well. The more it comes to uh, criticize the state and families for the ways in which they corrupt the youth, the ways in which they perhaps discourage uh, proper healthy relationships uh, between uh, young people uh, sort of experimenting with their sexuality, increasingly draws them into their own crisis of legitimacy as well, as they're accused of buying votes or trying to uh, subvert the state or simply pick fights over uh, trivial issues without actually being invested in the underlying uh, uh, issues at stake. Uh, so all of this now should be very familiar by now that uh, legitimacy, uh, marriage, uh, kinship, these are all sites of political struggle, not just in Jordan, but elsewhere as well. And by studying other societies and by studying what's important to other people, we can often find that we too have been overlooking important aspects of our own society and important aspects of what makes up the fabric of our own social reality. Thank you very much.